will be looking at the Dolly Gem. Dolly is a high performance pure Ruby client for accessing memcache servers. And what this will allow us to do is interface with the memcache servers, whether it's a separate box you have spun up within the local machine, or if it's on a separate Amazon memcache server. But what we're able to do is to have multiple Rails instances, as well as multiple Rails servers, communicate to one central mem store where we can access our keys and values. So you will need to install memcache on your server. If you're on Ubuntu, you can just type sudo apt-get install memcache d, or if you're on OS X, you can do brew install memcache d. So jumping ahead, looking at the end result, let's take a look at David Doe. So if I click on the show action here, you'll see on the left hand side where we selected it from our active record. So this hit the database, it wrote to the cache, and then it was able to, uh, when we come here and refresh it, you'll see that it no longer is hitting the database, but rather it's just reading from the memcache server and it got a hit and it returned the value. So this saves us a jump to the SQL server and on more complex queries or functions, you're gonna save a lot of CPU cycles by caching the results if needed. And also you wanna make sure that they are properly being expired. So let's jump into this and see what we can do to speed up our Rails application. The first thing that you'll want to do is to add the dolly gem into your gem file. Be sure to run the bundle command and restart your Rails application. You'll want to go under your config, environments, and production, and then also the development environment. And what we'll do here is, if you scroll down around line 58 or so, you'll see that it's set commented out for the config cache store, main cache store. And what we'll want to do is add our own in here. So we're configuring the cache store to use the symbol here, the dolly store. And one nice thing about the dolly gem is that if we need to reference a different server, so if the memcached server is not running on the local machine, we can then specify a route to that server. And also if that memcache server will be hosting multiple applications, you are able to create a namespace where you can separate out this application from other applications. So you can just add in a uh, block here where we're setting the namespace to, in this case, just 018. You'll then want to come into your development environment and you'll set the action controller perform caching from false to true. And then you can just copy and paste in your values from your production environment over into the development. Now you may want to remove the local host or changes to whatever the server it is that you'll be using, or you may want to just create a different namespace for that cache store. Then in our user model, we can just create a new method. So I'm calling self.cachefind ID. And what this will do is we can use the rails.cache and then pass in fetch and then give it a key here. So I'm passing in just a name here as user but then we're also capturing the ID of that user and we're sending it to expire in five minutes, then passing in within this block here, the actual command, so find ID. So typically what you would have in your controller is you would have user.findID, but instead what we're, what we're going to do now is instead of find ID, we're going to do cached find ID. Then in our user controller, we're setting the before action to call in this method, and it's for the show, edit, update, and destroy action. So if we come down here, we can change the private method set user. So instead of user.find, we can do user.cachefind and save these changes. So back in our application, if we edit David Doe, so we'll just click edit here, and let's just call this Dave Doe you'll see that it changes Dave Doe here. But if we go to our show action, it still says David Doe. That's because this is cached in the memcache, yet on our list or the home index, we're not doing any caching. So it's still, uh, it updates it and shows the latest information. But again, in the show and then also the edit, you'll see that it is still David. And what we have to do with this is once we update our cache, we need to expire it. So back in our user model, 
Once the user model is updated, we want to create a callback so after it commits to the database, we stale the cache and then it will be regenerated the next time uh, it's trying to be fetched. So we can create a after commit flush cache and then create a private method flush cache and where we're just calling on the rails cache delete and then we're passing in that key that we set up here. Once we save this, we can go back to our application and test it out. So when we refresh this page, we would expect it to still say David instead of Dave because we haven't expired the cache yet. So it does. Now let's hit update user and then let's go back and edit it. Now it says Dave. If we go into our show action, it'll also say Dave. We edit this and just call this John. You'll see that, you know, this pulls from our database. But if we go into here, this is pulling from the memcache and that is as well. And as your application grows, you may not want to flush every single key that's being generated, but only on certain situations. So let's say in our case, we only want to flush the cache and delete this key if the last name change, then we could just put in a parameter here where if the last name change, then it would delete the key. Otherwise, it would keep that key cache for at least the five minutes. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching.